All right. Let me go to a show of hands of people who have heard or said the phrase, maybe it's just fate. Google defines fate as something that is destined to happen. A lot of us have heard or said the phrase when we cross paths with another human being or you know, an event happens in our life that was just meant to be whether we like it or not. Steve Jobs said a famous quote, whether you believe in God, destiny, fake karma, whatever, believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. I took that quote to heart after I graduated college in December of 2017. I graduated I had a semester off before I started my year-long student teaching internship. You know, I could have worked, saved up, lollygagged a little bit, but the adventurous spirit in me wanted to travel. And I also wanted to perfect my Spanish speaking and my teaching abilities. So I decided to do a one-month teaching English as a foreign language certification course in the beautiful Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. But I decided not to just stay a month, but to stay five months. So the first month I was there, it was easy. I had a location, I had class structure, I had a place to live. But those other four months I was going to stay there, there were a lot of question marks. Would I be able to find a teaching job? What would I teach? What subject? What age? But probably the biggest, where was I going to live? I wanted to have that authentic cultural experience of living with the host family like I had back in Ecuador two years prior. But this time it wasn't arranged. So what do I go? Go door to door knocking on people's doors. Hey, can I live with you guys? Or in Spanish, puedo vivir con ustedes? Despite the awkwardness and uncomfortability of that, I was also dealing with something else. I was a gringo from the United States of America, a country that is led by a leader who isn't too well liked in Mexico. What Mexican family would open their doors to an outsider like me? I found my dream job, luckily, teaching in the beautiful J.J. Fernandez de Lizardi Secondary School. Not only did they need an English teacher, but also a geography and world history teacher, two subjects I'm passionate in, but also, you know, I'm certified in as well. After a quick interview and a quick impromptu mini lesson, whoa, I, uh, they hired me. Um, I did, there's a famous video of me dancing a little bit after. I was so excited about getting my dream job. But one question remained, where was I going to live? So I was a little discouraged about finding a host family. So I found a nice one bedroom apartment near the school for a great price. And so the guy picked me up on his ATV. I was like, okay, drove me to the place to show it. I was like, this is great. This is what I'm looking for. Um, and I was like, I don't have the cash right now, but I'll give it to you tomorrow. He's like, oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, why not? And so I'm texting him that night about details about the apartment. He's like, sorry, place is sold. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yep, someone showed up with the cash today. And I'm like, I was like, well, back to square one. But I remember thinking, it just wasn't meant to be. So I found a gentleman by the name of Salvador and his mother. They were living in a colony called Ramblases. They had a nice house, and I was like living with locals, which is good. Nice house, no roof, but hey, who cares? And the thing is, though, in Ramblases, I would need two buses to get to my school. And, you know, teachers get up early enough. So I'm like, uh. But, you know, I was like, I accepted. And so... But on the day February 10th of 2018, my life changed forever. My best friend Mark, who took the class with me, he was a six-year-old guy from Massachusetts, and he invited me out with him and his boyfriend. And I was like, you know, I don't know if I want a third wheel tonight, but I said no the other night. I was like, all right, I'll go out with you guys. And so we, we went to this restaurant, and then um, the boyfriend picked up one of his friends named Jessica, and Jessica came in the car, and she's like, and we were talking about where I was going to live, and I said, I'm going to live in Ramblases, a colony again. And she's like, oh, my God, Ramblases is dangerous. I'm like, oh, exactly what I wanted to hear. And so... So I was a little worried. Um, so we got to the Pizzo this restaurant called Pozzoli. If any of you have tried Pozzoli, it's delicious Mexican food. So we get to this famous restaurant, and we're, um, there's only four of us, but since it's busy, we're sitting at a table of eight. So there's another family on the other side of the table we sit at. So we're talking about where I'm going to live, and about 20 minutes into our conversation, the woman at the other end of the table interjects in. And she's like, you know, in Spanish, and says, we might, like, we might have a place for you. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So... She says they have an apartment they can rent out to me in Ramblases, the safe part, but it's not furnished yet. I'm like, 
back to square one again, you know, but I just remember thinking that was so nice of them to offer, you know, an apartment, they just kind of interjected in, and, but then Mark, my friend turned to me, he's like, Justin, you told me you wanted to live with the host family, and I'm like, Mark, you're right, so I communicated them in Spanish, I looked at the, the parents, and I said, you know, I really appreciate the offer, but I would really like to live with the host family, because when I lived with one in Ecuador, it was an unforgettable experience for me, and they looked at each other, and without hesitation, they turned to me and said, come live with us. And I'm flattened. And Francisco, the son, is there. He was 26 at the time. I'm 22. And he comes up to me. He's so excited. Joe, just, you can live with us. I can practice my English with you. You'll be like a little brother I never had. And I'm so excited. Next thing I know, I'm getting into a car. And they're showing me their, their beautiful house. And they have a room for me. And five days later, I move in. And for a Mexican family to do that to an outsider such as myself from a different country who they just met, it changed everything for me. And it's a tragedy that some Americans in this country only know Mexico for the bad, the drugs, crime, corruption, but they don't see the good, the hardest working people I've ever met and the kindest for them to open their doors to me. And they're so family oriented. Mario and Francisco, the sons here, I have a picture with them here, Mario and Francisco, um, they were 26 and 27, still living at home, still sharing a bed just so they could help their parents pay the bills. It wasn't just a family, but it was a team. And it was a team that I had the privilege to be a part of for four months. Four months with the Alvarez family. I shared unforgettable moments and memories with them. And I almost didn't go out to dinner that night. But I ended up meeting the family that would change my life and my perspective forever. Maybe it was just luck, or maybe it was just fate. Thank you.